What is going on everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now today's video is a slightly different subreddit than normal. It's r slash malicious compliance. But before you click off the video or do something silly that you'll regret later, trust me, this video is going to absolutely bang. The first story is just incredible. In it, OP, a kid, gets set detention at school for something they didn't really do. And in reality, it was their parents' fault. So instead of the kid going to sit at detention, their dad goes into school and sits at detention for them. It's an amazing story let's get right into it my dad served my detention when i was a freshman in high school i went to a school that was 30 plus minutes drive away they had a policy that three tardies with a good excuse or not across a semester would automatically assign an after school detention i was a really really good kid i never got in trouble ever always really nice and friendly to everybody i worked really hard at everything i did from sports to studies even if i wasn't the best at either i tried super hard and all my teachers knew that and all had good rapport with me now i did get a detention for being late three times but my parents declined to sign the detention notice and explained to administration how i had zero control over when they left and especially no control of road or traffic conditions even after us leaving extra early to have a time cushion. I was only late by a couple of minutes on the rare time I was even late, but administration declined to remove the detention assignments. I asked my parents to just let it go and let me serve the stupid detention just to be done with it, or just decline and leave it at that. But they had other plans. The next day, my little professory looking social worker counselor dad with the big glasses, briefcase, worn down notepad and his prized 20 year old Mont Blanc pen signed himself in to the school to serve detention the next afternoon. Much of the embarrassment and discomfort of the administrators. They had a hard time holding eye contact with him and were visibly uncomfortable. They found an empty room to put him in and checked in on him once or twice. They even offered to let him leave early, but he declined so he would serve the full amount of detention they assigned and wrote sentences for an hour until detention was over. To my recollection, after that, there seemed to be a differentiation between excused and unexcused tardies. I don't know if that was for the whole school, but for us anyway. It was never an issue for me after that. But like I said, it was rare anyway to even be a couple of minutes late. At the time, I was so embarrassed. But looking back now, it's kind of funny. And I appreciate the point he was making in not letting me get punished for something I didn't do wrong and had no control over. Yeah, I mean, to me, that makes complete sense, right? It sounds like from the post that you get a lift to school with your parents. And obviously, you can only get a lift at the time when they are driving the car. So if they're late, it impacts you and there's really not much you can do about that. So yeah, OP, I completely understand where you're coming from. It wasn't really your fault that your parents made you late. On the other hand, for your dad to sit at the tension for you just shows what an absolute legend he is. He knows it wasn't your fault that you've been late to school because clearly you're a model student. You do things completely right. And you know, you'd never be late to school if you were driving yourself it's your parents fault and they accept that and for that reason he sat at detention like an absolute legend that he is to be fair i wish my dad had sat some of my detentions for me back when i was in school but then again he had nothing to do with them and they were all my fault so uh moving on right then moving on to our second story accuse me of cheating on an open book collaborative exam fine i'll report myself to the honor council this happened about 10 years ago at my american university I enrolled in a class that two friends also happened to enroll in, an elective for our major. The professor, whom I will call Professor Y, told us straight off the bat that our entire grade would be based on two exams that would be open book and we could collaborate with anyone else in the class, as long as we cited that we did so. Additionally, it was the kind of exam where you could submit it as many times as you want before the deadline. Professor Y's rules, though, were that he'd grade easiest on the first try and much tougher with each subsequent try. Fair enough. Now, some background on this professor. I'm not defending him, but I do think this context is important. He immigrated to the States from another country where women are seen as inferior and the often expectations of women are to be meek and quiet. Maybe less so nowadays, but definitely more so when he was growing up. In class one day, a female student challenged the professor. He argued back. She admitted he made a good point and he said to her, you are very agreeable. You'd make a great wife. Now, at this point, I probably should have reported him for sexism. However, we all apparently let it slide. He was in his late 60s. He had tenure. So I think we all brushed it aside as harmless. 
Hindsight is 2020, of course. I'm female as well, by the way. Fast forward a few weeks into the semester and the first exam is given to us. My male friend, David, and I did the test together. We submitted it on the same day. On the bottom of my test, I wrote, worked with David because I wanted to follow the professor's rules. A few days later, we all got our first attempt at the test back. David scored the equivalent of about a C. Remember, he had further chances to improve. My test, though, had a big fat zero at the top with the words cheater written on it. I was shocked. I obviously held back after class and asked my professor why this was written on my test. But he just started screaming at me. I hate liars. I hate people like you. You're scum. You are a liar. I could not believe what I was hearing. I was sobbing, explaining that he said, and it was in the syllabus, that we could work with other students. I asked where I had cheated, and the professor had literally underlined the first five words of one question where both David and I had started off the paragraph saying something like, the reason that we are seeing these results is. And that was that. I asked him why he thought I cheated and not David, but the professor wouldn't listen to me and continued to insult me until I left. Now, my university was super strict about plagiarism and cheating. We got emails like once a week about the honor council. All the emails said that anyone caught cheating would be reported to the honor council and sit trial. So I went to their office and reported myself. They were all confused and were like, wait, you're reporting yourself, not the professor? And I told them calmly that I'd been accused and given a zero without any evidence. So I wanted to sit trial. They incredulously told me no student had ever asked for a trial, but I was following the university rules and I was confident I would win. Needless to say, my professor was not happy. At the next class, he pulled me off the class and screamed yet again that they were his rules in his class and he decides the grades, not the honor council. I said that's not the university's policy and if he thought I was cheating, he should have gone to them. Since he didn't, I did. He was livid and tried to pick on me to back down, but I didn't. We had the trial and I obviously won. At the end of the semester, I organized a meeting with the dean of the school and filed a formal sexism complaint against Professor Y. The dean, also incredulous, promised to launch a formal investigation into this professor and would be meeting with him to discuss it. I'm sure that nothing happened besides a slap on the wrist, but even a slap on the wrist was well worth it. I tell you what guys the fact that op's professor didn't report the cheating in my opinion just shows that he knew he was in the wrong in this situation and that obviously op wasn't cheating otherwise you just report it wouldn't you as op said you know if if a, if a student is caught cheating then the professors or the teachers would normally report it because that's in the syllabus that's like school law to do that obviously if your school is you know very watchful for plagiarism and cheating and stuff like that then yeah you'd obviously report it i mean if i cheated in my school back in the day and the teacher found out or you know had suspicion they'd obviously report that because that's the dumb thing the fact that he didn't do it proves to me that he knew he was just you know mucking about and being really unfair to be honest so what op did was absolutely brilliant and you know role reversal am i cheating well yeah i think you are but i'm not gonna report it right then i'll just report myself and we'll find out for sure if i am and now moving on to our final story tell me to drop the class if i don't like your rules okay then you'll lose five students and your job So, when I was a freshman in college, I registered for a basic English 102 course that doubled as a humanities credit. I thought, great, two birds, one stone, despite the rate my professor for this class being abysmal at best. A few things to note. I have ADHD and dyslexia, Bs, Ds, Ps, and Gs. So I have a hard time reading most times, but especially handwritten stuff, even my own. It's also important to note that I had an ADA allowance on file, meaning I get some permissions to allow me to take classes and function as normally as possible. These permissions included use of my tablet during class to write notes and about an hour longer on tests. Well, first day of class, the professor strolls in with the arrogance and snobitude of someone who thinks they're getting tenured this year. He starts talking, going over the syllabus, and says, There will be no phones, laptops, or technology of any kind in my class. You will write all your notes by hand. Which isn't going to work for me. So I raise my hand and ask him if I can talk to him privately about the rule. That went over about as well as a lead balloon. And he starts getting snippy and says, Anything you need to talk with me about can be found in the syllabus. 
But again, I said that I needed to talk to him and that it was pretty important. Finally, he just says to say it to the class. He doesn't have time to take out to deal with whining of any kind. Like, okay, dude. So I say that I'm dyslexic and need my tablet to do the notes and read the assignments and that my ADA permissions are on file and emailed to all my professors before class. He says, yeah, I saw the email, but I don't care. You can do the work just like everyone else. You're not special even if you were in special ed. The class goes deadly quiet at that. I'm absolutely shocked at his bold and completely hilarious lack of awareness and care for his job. I'm staring at him, open mouthed, and he thinks he's won. He's got this smug little face like I've just been told, and there are no other options, nor is there any way he'll regret his behavior. One of the girls in class finally finds her voice and calls him out on his ableism and lack of decorum, but he cuts her off, saying, if you don't like my rules, you can drop the class. So she says, okay, and pulled out her laptop and dropped the class right in front of him. And taking the cue from her, three other students and I do the same, and we leave class together. I've never met this girl before, but she then asked me if I want to go to the dean, because honestly, I'm really shaken. So I said yes, and we go straight there, telling the dean of students what happened, as well as the ADA counselor. Yeah, I can imagine they're not going to be that happy about that. They took the girl's statements and mine, and discovered that this professor had pulled this stuff for years, but nobody ever wanted to get involved. Six months later, I hear that not only had the professor not gotten tenured, but he was fired and blacklisted from teaching at the collegiate level. Well, yeah, and I should hope so too. I mean, he's clearly ableist. I don't know what he's got against people that have, you know, learning difficulties or are disabled in any sort of way, but why? What? You've literally got an email. Go in your email account, go in your inbox, go in most recent, and the email should be there from the ADA telling you, you know, that this person, your new student, by the way, is dyslexic and has to use an iPad or they won't be able to do the work. Why would you not allow your student to use an iPad just so they can do the work. I mean, seriously, it makes no sense to me. It's not as if you're saying, oh, okay, because I'm letting one student use an iPad, now everyone's going to go on their phones. No, that's not how it works. She's got dyslexia. Therefore, she needs to use an iPad. I mean, seriously, maybe he was just got into the end of his career and was like, you know, I can't be dealing with any of this rubbish anymore. Not this rubbish, but he's like, you know what? I'm not even going to accept anything else to what I want to teach in my class and the way I want to teach it. I don't care if you're disabled or whatever you are. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to teach my lesson. You got to deal with it. I'm going to, you know, retire soon, get a lot of money and I'll be good. But uh, no, fired and no tenure. Unlucky, mate, but you deserved it. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of our slash malicious compliance. Don't worry, not all malicious compliance stories are about school. I just thought it'd be nice to, you know, group together some, some stories about school for a first little taste of what this subreddit is all about. If you did enjoy it and you want more stories from this subreddit, I mean, to be fair, I really enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down below. Like this video. It shows me that you enjoyed the video and want more from me on this subreddit in particular. If you are new around here, then please subscribe to my channel by clicking this button. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video.